Next on the Brook Network, the History's Puzzles. It's an open invitation for human political puzzle masters to put the true investigative game puzzle pieces back together again. When the innocent are maligned in a world of political situations, the pieces of the puzzle to put back together the accurate life and legacy of an individual becomes a maze of dead-end controversial investigations, especially after 50 years and the death of one of the allegedly maligned who died of a heart attack in 1996. Compounding the difficulty of politically correcting what politics is accused of maligning, through the self-indulgence of power and greed, and all world and country governments have been exposed to such things and many times are guilty, it does raise suspicions for the controversy of who is right or wrong in trying to keep grace and honor among them. Today's political puzzle, Lim Chin Siong, after being quizzed here on the Brook Network, we did a simple online search and the following information was very easily obtained from Wikipedia, for example. The mystery puzzle, however, runs deep and other search results will open up to you just how deep and just how charismatic in speaking and appearance he was. Your puzzle fact-finding mission, should you choose to accept it, is to find out if Lim Chin Siong was or was not a member of the Communist Party. His popularity rose rapidly in his early years and he became the leader of Chinese workers, trade unions, and Chinese middle school students in the 1950s. He was slim, youthful, dedicated, and had a handsome boyish face. His oratory as a speaker in the dialect among the Chinese masses was legendary. The girls in the trade unions adored him. When he spoke, there was tremendous applause. By the end of the campaign, Lim Chin Siong was seen as a charismatic figure and a person to be reckoned with in Singapore politics and what was of a more immediate concern within the People's Action Party. Lim co-founded the People's Action Party in 1954. At the young age of 22, he was elected into the Legislative Assembly as a member for Bukit Timah in 1955. He represented the People's Action Party in the 1956 Constitutional Talks in London. In 1955, Lim was part of a labor strike by bus workers that resulted in the violent Hock Lee bus riots. He later led the Chinese middle school riots in 1956 with further violence. The chief minister suppressed the riots aggressively and Lim with many other leftists were arrested. The People's Action Party promised to release Lim as one of its promises to the electorate in order to gain support and thus honored that by freeing Lim in 1959 after winning the first general election. Lim later formed the Barrison Socialists in September 1961. After Singapore's referendum affirming merger with Malaysia, Lim and many opposition party members were detained under the Internal Security Act by the ruling People's Action Party government in February 1963. The Barrison Socialists contested the 1963 general election while Singapore was a state of Malaysia. Though they put up a fierce fight, they lost. This loss began Barrison Socialists' eventual decline. During detention, Lim was reported to be depressed and suicidal. He was finally released from prison on July 28, 1969, after forcibly renouncing politics and went into exile in London. He returned to Singapore in 1979 with his family. The Barrison Socialists merged with the Workers' Party in 1988. Lim died of a heart attack February 5, 1996. Doubts have surfaced about Lim's status as a communist. The Prime Minister of Singapore and later Minister Mentor of Singapore maintained that Lim was communist, but this claim had been denied by Lim. The Secretary General of the Malayan Communist Party 
never acknowledged Lim to be a party member. It was noted that the Prime Minister perceived Lim to be a challenge to his authority. It's interesting to note also that declassified British documents have stated that Lim was not actually a communist. However, history textbooks in Singapore have stated that he is one, or was one. Dr. Greg Polgrain of Griffith University has also observed that the British governor of Singapore and his chief secretary in their reports to London stated that the police found no evidence to establish that Lim was communist. The Legacy well, Lim and his followers' contribution to Singapore's political development was that their dedication and selfless dedication to their cause helped to ensure that the ruling PAP also had to make sure that incorruptibility and integrity were central to their political legitimacy in Singapore. In his obituary, he was respected for his simple lifestyle. He did not seek financial gain or political glory and totally committed to the advancement of this cause. There you have it. Your investigating political puzzle challenge then was Lim Chin Siong a member of the Communist Party or not? Until next time on History's Puzzles here on the Brook Network, keep life interesting.